What is happening? Welcome to the Nick and Alex baseball show where we do not have a sickness. I I am Nick Pollock and as fast endures possibly foot hand and mouth disease. Um we don't know, it's not confirmed, but he's not here because of that. Today no, we have a special guest with us and you may know her from MLB Network. It's the lovely Ellen Adair. Alan, thank you so much for being here. I'm I'm so delighted to be here. I know that we've got so many plagues going on in this country right now, <laughs> we uh, but we are the two of us are lucky to not have any of them currently. <laughs> very true. I, I do have a very weird cough. Newly. Yes, very weird cough yes. still. But you know it'll be all right. Oh. Um, but yeah, the Nick and Alex show baseball show continues with special guest Alan Adair, and I figured of all the people I know, who better to carry the baseball passion like alex fast and ellen so uh ellen I'm just so tell everybody touched. just more about yourself sure so i mean i mean the main thing that i'm very excited about is that my name is still a vowel so you can still pronounce nebs <laughs> it's nebs instead of nabs but like it's still yeah that word. works i feel like if this was one of your main requirements for who you were going to ask on the show today like you <laughs> i nailed it Absolutely. uh yes um, so my main job is that I'm an actor. And as a matter of fact, it's very lucky that I was able to join today because I was supposed to be filming, uh, but it was raining. And so it Look got postponed that. until Thursday. So yes, Amazing. everything's just working out the way that it's supposed to. There it is. Thank you so much, Alex, for possibly having foot, hand, and mouth disease. We <laughs> That's not what I meant. I meant that. as a fill-in, <laughs> as a fill-in for Nebs, for today's episode of Nebs. I, I should um, just but call it Nebs. Yes, I also uh, have a couple of podcasts. So uh, one of them is called Take Me Into the Ball Game, in which I grade baseball movies on the 20 to 80 scouting scale used for baseball prospects, as God intended. That's and uh, I'm also on a podcast called Love Takes Action, which is just interviewing people about uh stories of their lives. It's really a lovely podcast. And then, yes, I am also on MLB Network's Off Base, uh, which is uh, the the really the just get hyped about how much fun baseball is type of a podcast. Yeah, Although it's the I kind of show where everyone says, my God, Ellen, you are so smart. <laughs> and you go, oh, stop it. And we all go, yeah, no, Ellen, Ellen, Ellen knows her stuff. You're the one that's like, let me tell you actually how good they are. What I love about the show is that I feel like the show is just be whoever you are, right? Sure, yeah. It's like a network show, but it's like, what brings you joy? And I'm like, I am a dweeb. And so what brings <laughs> me joy is like numbers about stuff and, you know, weird little facts and stuff. So, uh, so yes, I I feel like I'm just allowed to be exactly the dweeb that I am, like well, rapping about come and to the right place and and also, you know, talking about CSW. <laughs> Well, there it is. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. You've come to the right place. It's the Nick and Alex baseball show. If you haven't rated and reviewed us already on iTunes, iTunes, go and do that. iTunes too. Make sure you do that one. But on Spotify as well. I uh, and leave us a review. If you don't like it, leave it that too. Tell us what you want us to do on the show. Uh, but first, we are going to show the mystery pitcher for today, and you get to participate in this. Uh, Fast never gets them right. You have any sort of fear of being wrong? He never gets them right. Maybe once I've seen him get it right. Uh, we'll see how you do here. This picture, as I get it up onto uh, the screen somehow. Uh, yes, I'm here so we are. I'm glad you're doing that and not me. I'm not. Of course. Yeah. I don't remember who I did, by the way. This this picture has a 3-6 and six record, at 65 innings, a 3.44 ERA, a 104 whip, 28% strikeout rate, 9.6% walk rate, 31% CSW, 95.6 mile per hour heater, 14.6% swing strike rate, and only 23% hard contact rate. A lot of those numbers, whip, strikeout, CSW, fastball velocity, swing, strike rate, and hard contact rate, all inside the top 25 of all starting pitchers. Do you have an idea who this could be? I'm super intrigued by this. Mo the main thing that I'm intrigued by is the, the very poor walk rate compared to the very good whip. Mm. Like, gives up walks, but doesn't give up a lot of Hits. Hits, yeah. And I feel like the real clue here mm. are actually the first two, maybe ah, not. Three and six and 65.1 innings. Yeah. And 65.1 so, innings. So, like somebody who maybe got called up mid season, could be who's that. not on a very good team. Mm -hmm. But so many of these other things. Yeah, this oh, is a tough one. 
Oh, do you have I, it? I, I think I know who it is because I was looking at it pretty recently. So I don't know if that's cheating. No, it's not. So go ahead. Take a guess. Um, I'm not going to tell you that you're right or wrong, of course. Okay. All right. I think it's Jesus Lazardo. I could oh, be wrong. Jesus Lazardo. Oh, that's an but interesting guess. Like that's like, uh -huh. uh, it's sort of at least those the 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 innings and the you know not being on an offensively good team obviously their pitching mm. is well amazing. we'll see we'll see if that nine point six percent walk rate is right doesn't know oh, yeah that fits with Lizardo. I um I, yeah maybe I don't know that's my guess all right it's a that's well it's guess. a good guess I think uh we're going to actually that's funny transition this is why you guessed Lizardo. it's a good segue <laughs> into tonight's game of the day which was uh Jesus Lizardo versus your Aaron Nola. Um, and this one was fantastic if you got to see any of it. Jesus Lazardo was doing wonderful things. Was Aaron Nola doing anything special at all tonight, Ellen? Well, I was a little nervous early on because, you know, really the key for Aaron Nola is his fastball command. And I think particularly the command of that two seamer and, you know, whether or not he can sort of use it like a like a front door two seamer to lefties. I feel like sure, yeah. it's, it's super interesting. Um, so, it, but if he's not quite, if it's not swerving back over the plate, uh, then he's just not getting exactly what he needs out of it. And it just seemed like his command wasn't the best um, mm -hmm. in whichever inning it was that, uh, that he gave up a couple of hits um, that resulted in the run that was scored against yeah, him. Fourth inning, um, it, I believe. It, it, Fourth inning. I couldn't remember if it was the third or the fourth. Um, yeah, it was basically like both of the hits were on two seamers that were right in the middle of the plate. Whoops. Um, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that, Aaron Nola. Um, <laughs> I love you so much. I love you no matter what. I love you even when you give up eight runs. Um, yeah. But uh, certainly the the it sort of seemed like he actually had a better feel as he went on, which is something that like the younger Aaron Nola used to do all the time is to sort of actually um be a little like not quite have a feel for his pitches see what they were doing early on in the game and then actually get better as the game progressed so uh so obviously it ended up being a good start but at first i was like oh, i don't know like just this this and this is i don't have a number put for this but just like the anecdotal strike rate didn't seem like what i wanted it to be for aaron mm -hmm. nola but ended up being a pretty good start yeah, I mean, Aaron Nola, at the end of the day, 35% CSW, 16 whiffs, went pretty deep in this one. Uh, Jesus Lazardo also looked great. Looked uh, really yeah, good. that change of being curveball combining for 15 whiffs in this, 40% CSW on the curveball. Oh, you know, we normally don't just focus on single games in this one, but I felt this was such a fun one. <laughs> uh, and it, it, it's why baseball is what it is, right? You have these pitcher duels. You have seven innings from Luzardo going toe for toe against uh, uh against Aaron Nola. Also there was a play at the plate, um an amazing throw from left field that scored the second run for the Phils and took away uh, or actually almost made it a loss for Lozardo before uh the the Marlins and Phillies went back and back to uh, make it 3-2 in the end. But ah, it was just it was it was good baseball. And if you didn't like that game, I don't know what you're doing. Another good baseball. What we should be talking about. I mean, we, we have this our thing of the week that we do. And I saw your tweet about being a gal and gal. And I wanted yeah. to get, get the floor to talk a little bit about him. Oh, I'm so excited. But before I do that, I just want to share that I was wearing this shirt. <laughs> Live every day like it's Nola Day. The yes. OG one as well. Yes, the OG. I have both, but I couldn't yes. immediately find the other one. And then I'm also wearing this shirt. <laughs> Hang on. Just Wait, no second. way. No way. <laughs> Is this the gal and gal shirt underneath? Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, I was. Oh man, I was so tempted to wear that for this one. Because how could I, I pick? I but yes, now, now you know what? Like that. I'm an actor, and costume changes are very important. So I was talking about oh, Aaron Nola, and I was wearing my Aaron Nola shirt, and now I'm going to talk about <laughs> Zach Gallen. And ah, uh, what is ah uh, just so exciting about Zach Gallen is that he has pitched uh 41 and a third consecutive scoreless innings it's, it's so exciting it's yeah. so in like get hyped people when i was on mlb network uh on friday there was a question that was who's the best team in the national league and i answered the diamondbacks and <laughs> i was like i mean i i'm 
I'm kidding, but also I'm not because the Diamondbacks have been playing, all of them have been playing out of their minds. And when I got a little pushback, I wanted to be like, but Zach Gallen. And then I realized like if I picked Zach Gallen, I couldn't also basically be making the case for the entire team. Like, you know, Christian Walker has been incredible. And like, they've Merrill got Kelly. all these, Merrill Kelly has been amazing. And, yeah. and like, They've just got their very exciting young outfielders with like Corbin Carroll and Alec Thomas and Dalton Varsho can play both catcher and center field. I mean, it's it's amazing. Jake McCarthy has been great. And like, I yes. love Carson Kelly anyway. So so but what I really wanted to yell was like Zach Gallen has a consecutive scoreless streak that is like on the leaderboard for best of all time. And how are we not talking about this? Um, so with just another two thirds of an inning, he will catch Brandon Webb's streak uh, in 2007, which would set a new record for the Diamondbacks. And if he can go another three and two thirds innings, he will crack the top 10 tying Cy Young, Sal Magley and Doc White. Wow. Um, Yes, obviously he is chasing Oral Hershiser's record of 59 innings. And it's it's just it's like so incredibly beautiful to see. Um over this stretch of 41 and a third innings, he has a 1.47 whip and 46 Ks, um making for a 33% strikeout rate and Pretty fantastic. Also a 27.1 uh, K minus BB, which would be tied for the best in baseball for the season. Do you know who that is? Uh, that would be, uh, I actually don't know. Who would that be? It's Shane McClanahan. Oh, of course it is. Oh my God. Yes. Um, and this was exciting. He also has a 51.6% ground ball rate, which far exceeds his hmm. average of 44.7% for his career. So he's also been doing that. And I know that our friend, the wonderful Mikey Ahedo, wrote a piece about what Gallen has been doing over at Baseball Prospectus, in which he notes in part that Gallen has been throwing his fastball in the upper quadrant of the zone more often for called strikes and also for inducing weaker contract, which contact, which is exciting because... You know, of course, I I very notably uh, a couple of years ago got extremely excited about Zach Gallen's edge percentage. Oh and yes, so yes. I think it's the most affected. popular clip I have on Twitch. Actually, <laughs> I doubt that. I'm sorry if that's true. Anyway, yes, I I love Zach Gallen, and I have loved him like just basically since he came up, and I'm just so hyped for him. Wonderful, um, and. You could say that him throwing up in the zone, you're saying it induces weaker contact, but also in induces a higher contract um, to go along with what you said. Because I see the thing is, that's what I do when I say those things all the time. I, I try to work with it. And that was good. I like that. I yeah, was, no, it's actually really lean good. In. I lean in. I misspeak words so often, especially yeah, for somebody is. who's yeah. like reportedly paid to say them uh, in a number, in a variety of different ways that, yeah, I should just really try to go with it. More One of often. the worst puns I, I went with for ages was the NL easy. And that was just the typo. And I was like, oh, well, this is funny. And I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, it's no longer true, though. I know. It's really unfortunate. Come on, guys. Play to the joke for me. Don't, Can you do that? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, because your Phillies are in there, of course. Um, but I, I will say, Zach Allen, obviously, I had the 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 famous lost interview three years ago. Indeed. Um, I've, I've been a, I'm such a huge fan of what he does. It is actually fascinating to me how the story of the season for me has been how he hasn't actually lived to his quote unquote potential with a cutter that is missing bats far less, uh, 18% CSW as opposed to the 27 and 24. They had 19 and 20 with the pitch. Uh, his changeup is not the same CSW pitch, 32 and 35 in those two seasons, and just 25 this year with only a 15% swing strike rate. And yet he's on the best stretch of his career as that pitch uh, has increased its strike rate. Uh, the curveball has been phenomenal for him at the bottom of the zone. And then the four-seamer has just exceeded all expectations. Uh, 168 batting out average allowed this year. And he's also done this against some tough teams, had to endure cores before. And now we'll have to do it again. And that's really the biggest question mark. Now, now Zach Allen has to get the cores. He has to get the Padres. He has to get the Dodgers in his next three starts. We're all hoping that Mr. 11 and 2, if you can believe it, on the Diamondbacks, uh, can pull this off, especially after the shoulder stuff at the beginning of the year. Uh, so we are all Gallon gals. Uh, and, and, and Can I Ellen, ask you a Zach Gallon question? Of course. 
So I think I originally became friends with Scott White because I tweeted that uh, Zach Gallon's change-ups reminded me of chocolate-dipped strawberries. So if you were to... It just it just the way they were like diving out of the zone. I just like pictured them just like enough. being like a little strawberry and like they're just delicious. <laughs> like they just seem like sort of like cool and refreshing, but also Love like it. chocolate. Yeah. So I mean, if you were to assign a food item to Zach Gallon's other pitches, what would it be? <laughs> well, first of all, it's you know, he gets a cool whip with the chocolate uh, covered strawberries, right? Um yes. yeah, the, the, he absolutely the, does. The fastball to me is just, it's a good standard. You know, it just kind of gets in there and you're like, yes, I will have, um, I don't know. What's a good standard for food? I'll, I'll have baked potato. I'm baked Irish. Potato. That sounds great. A wonderful baked potato is his four seamer. His curveball yeah, is that like little fixings. like, yeah, well, a well, well created one. It's, it's one of the better baked yes, potatoes yeah. out there. Uh, then of course you have the the curveball as a um, it's a delicacy, this curveball. So I'm I'm going to go with um, you know why I'm going to go with creme brulee, um, but from Ooh. Paris, like proper. That's just a sweet looking thing. Yeah, you know, it's just yeah. yeah. Somehow curveballs tend to like remind me of meat. Oh really? So I feel like it's like a filet mignon or something mm, like that. Yeah, sure, I don't sure, know. Sure. They're just they're just it's juicy. Only, it's only when they're meaty. I just want to eat the uh, curveballs. <laughs> um, and then but it and is then delicate. A, yeah. Yes, and and the cutter is is the necessary. Um, all right, I know you need to be here, so I'm gonna say that's the broccoli at the dish. Yeah. Yes. Right. Perfect. I actually um, quite like broccoli, but no, see, you're, you're right. It's like there is broccoli that's great. But sometimes you're just like, all right, I need to have the broccoli. And that's his cutter. It's got Parmesan on it. But yeah. Yeah. It's oh, ooh. when it's got Parmesan and roasted just right. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some good broccoli. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for going um, on this exercise with me. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, my thing of the week is something I maybe even said last week. Um, I'm just going to say it again. Uh, you don't know what. It's the thing of the fortnight. Yeah, it's the thing of the fortnight. Um, I just cannot stop. I can't stop thinking about PLV. And you guys don't know what that is. And this is another tease again. Um, oh, man. I I think it, it will be something that uh, we have something like it already. But this is a proper seed for us to then create all these really amazing applications for, for stats that we can understand players differently than we do now. And I could not be more excited for this. So that's my thing of the week. Brought to you I, by I, PLV. Indeed. I think it deserves to be for, for from what I... For just like infer. for months. It's just my thing of the week yeah. is always going to be PLV. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, as well, it should be. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Um. All right. So, so the other major stories that are going on right now, I have to do it. And I'm so sorry, but it's just how can you avoid this? The Yankees, after being, what, 15 and a half games up in the AL East, are now about five ahead of the Rays. Actually, the Rays won tonight, so I believe it's 4.5 with the, uh, mm. the postponement uh, doubleheader tomorrow for the Twins and Yankees as we record this on Tuesday evening. Are they going to win the East or not, Ellen? Well, I mean, I think honestly, the, the scarier position to be in is obviously the other New York team. Um, but uh, as I believe the Atlanta is only a, a half game back of the oh, match is that point. right? Oh, it's I think half so. a game. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. I did not realize that. Oh, Terrible. dear. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm going to say that, yes, the Yankees hang on to the division. And my reason for saying that is not just it, it is numerical rather than being based on the virtues of the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, because the Rays are obviously already 4.5 games back, as you said, but also they have the toughest schedule in the American League um, go heading down the stretch. Their opponent's sure. uh, winning percentage is 553. They're playing six versus Houston and nine versus Toronto, which looks like a typo on Tankathon. Um, but I must accept That's, the truth. Yeah, it's, a, a, it's I believe, five games, including a doubleheader. Um, yeah. 
And, and then, then three Yankees. versus the Yankees, um, yeah. with whom I think, you know, obviously they're they're evenly matched. And I mean, that that said, like going into the weekend, the the Rays had scored the most runs per game since August 4th. And obviously, I just I feel like what we've seen with them is that a, a lot of their additions have been paying off recently, like offensive auditions like Manny Margot and Francisco Mejia and Harold Ramirez, David Peralta, like Jose Siri has been pretty useful for them. Um, so I do think that uh, the Rays have a good shot, like they're playing the teams that they want to be playing if they want to make up ground. But I do think that just their schedule looks so tough that I, I bet the Yankees cling to and the spot. They're also missing Shane McClanahan. You have Drew Rasmussen uh, missing tonight for paternity leave. And you never quite know how that's going to affect a pitcher. A lot of them we've seen get this new energy from it. Some, uh, well, they're a little rusty when they come back. They've been removed from their schedule. We'll see there. Uh, but yeah, it does feel as if the race should not be doing this. But then again, they always feel like they should not be doing this. Uh, and honestly, let's just be let's just be clear here. The Orioles are going to win the division, and who cares? Um, but I actually, on Friday, I went ahead and I was like, yeah, yeah, they're going to swap, swap plays with the there it is. Blue Jays. And uh, <laughs> uh, that uh, hasn't aged so well so far. So that just shows you I, how I good I honestly my hope it happens. Is. I could not be more excited for this podcast when the Orioles are playing on October 3rd for the playoffs. And uh, October 4th, rather will be that episode what's hard the, is that i absolutely sorry, need the mariners to be i i i require yeah, we, it yeah i require I, it of 2022 need, that the yeah. mariners are in i'll talk to some people i there is there's one thing that you mentioned that i think is a fantastic stat about the run the run scoring from uh, the rays i didn't realize that um i do wonder i uh, have you heard of okay so when we talk about offenses, that's the easiest and like obvious one. Who scored the most runs per game, right? I uh, the the often counter argument to it is like, well, if you score like 15 in one game or so, then that does sway that, right? And I wonder if there's a way, uh, like how much better of a representation it could be if we ha someone did something along the lines of games of four runs or more, or what mm. number that would be, like percentage of games above a certain threshold. Like what? What number would we be okay with? Five, four? To like this to talk about a good offense? Like that should be winning games. Yeah, I mean, I five? guess I do feel like runs per game slightly slightly answers that question. But yes, then sometimes it it. That's yeah. That's always the the counter argument. I'm like, I want to shut them up. So I'm trying to think like, is there <laughs> like I I'm someone about I don't know. It's just how my brain has been working right now. Is like percentage like grouping of like okay, how many. Um. Oh, he hits a lot of home runs, but like he hit like all these in two weeks. And is he good for right. the year? Right. Uh, and like the more evenly spread out is generally the better version of that player and the better of that of a team. I don't know. This is yeah, no, no, no. I think I think it's a good point. I feel like four is maybe a good number. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine the Rays are still winning this, you know, considering like if you score the most runs, as you said, like you have the highest chance of having more of those games and all. Uh, yeah. But I, I think it does it, you know, it, it, eliminates also obviously the, the your pitching from anything you know what i mean you could be winning right. a lot of games because your pitching is shutting everything down but the question is well, how is just your offense and how yeah. how reliable is your offense uh, would certainly be a question that is exactly. on my mind right. as a phillies fan yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um well you won tonight congratulations spoiler yeah. alert Last. for everybody <laughs> Um, yeah. they, they, they won in the bottom of the ninth, uh, wonderful fashion, of course. Uh, yeah, the Yankees have to do it, but they're, I feel like this could be the year that the Mets are the new Yankees and the Yankees are the new Mets. And this would be the showcase of it. Right. I mean, yeah. think about this back in the, the, the aughts. I don't know what other people call them. They but call them the aughts, I think. Is it yeah. the aughts? Is that the, the generalized term, the aughts? I mean, I'm generally a time traveler, and so who am I to say, <laughs> but yeah. Um, I believe it. I I mean, the Mets were the ones that collapsed like this, while the Yankees had the Red Sox on their tail, and that was an amazing thing in September. Now you have, of course, Atlanta with the Mets, and you have the Yankees, the ones. I, I feel, I don't know. I feel like it's 
bound to happen and it's going to humble us and we're going to be so upset. And I know you'd be very happy about it. No, I wouldn't be. I I wouldn't be. I'm, I'm genuinely, I mean, I don't think that the Phillies are going to overtake the division. So I'd rather it be the Mets, frankly, you know, my husband is a Mets fan and I live in Queens and so, yeah, like, you know, whatever, like hashtag let's go Mets. (laughs) You heard it here first. Hashtag let's go Mets from Ellen Adair. Uh, and uh, for, vis-a-vis 2022, vis-a-vis the rest of this season, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm rooting for the Mets to hang on to the division. I'm very bored of it being Atlanta. I'm extremely, extremely bored. Well, okay, so as we segue here from the Yankees, we're going to talk about Aaron Judge and Otani, but just for a second before we do, we're going to take a very quick break. All right, and we're back. Okay. So you Aaron had such Judge, a dance party during the break. Of course you did. I mean, Seriously. yeah, the Phillies won. It's the one that you make and you put out the Twitter. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be late on that tonight. Yeah. So, so two things. Um, one, does hitting 61 or 62 home runs matter to you? Um, considering, of course, you have McGuire with 70, you have Sosa with 66, you have Bonds with 73. Uh, is that still a major landmark or a milestone, or is it kind of? You know what? I get it. It was a thing in 61 with Maris and, and, um, and Mantle, but it's kind of past now. Do you, are you, are you, do you care about that chase? I do. I do. And, you know, I say this as somebody who, for whom like Roger Maris might be my favorite Yankee. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, I don't know. He was just the, the Yankees fans were so mean to him that they it makes were. me feel like yeah. I can love him. You know what I mean? Like I can like, mm-hmm posthumously come to his defense and be like, no, Roger Maris, you were great. Um, Yeah, I think I always develop a great affection for anybody that Yankees fans beat up on, particularly when it was so unwarranted in Maris's case. Um, So I I guess I do have a sort of strangely emotional feeling about that for that reason, but I, I think it also matters. And I feel like this is the kind of thing that you can't necessarily like write an article about, but number one, it's the clean record, right? Ooh, like, yeah. we don't feel cool saying that, it, but it is. Like, it is It is the record that that is absolutely steroid-free. And so, however you feel about steroids, obviously it helped some players hit more home runs. And so it is, a, it is impressive to go against the record set by the last person that we know was not doing that. And... I also think that something that makes what Judge is doing really exciting, and this was a point that Hannah Kaiser made on the show, and I've heard some other people make, is essentially what Judge is doing in this particular offensive environment. So the gap between how many homers Judge has hit and like the next closest batter, sure. which I th- believe is Kyle Schwarber, like it's a large gap, right? He's doing this in an environment in which, you know, it, it, this is not 2019. Like the, every, every little player with like adorable matchstick legs is not hitting 20 home runs. And so I think that that's what makes this very exciting to follow. Yeah, that's a really great point. It is 54 home runs for Judge, 36 for Kyle Schwarber, 35 for Austin Riley, and 34 for Paul Goldschmidt. So that gap is something I don't think I was really taking into account myself. And that's a fantastic point. Uh, well, it's not my own point. I stole it from Hannah. From Hannah. Right. But I attribute it to her. But, but you thought of it and you thought it was good. And I'm glad that you brought it up here. Um, it does very much matter to me. I want to hit 62. Uh, I, I very much hold that exact stance of the clean record. Right. Um, it all got muddied. It all got just pushed aside a bit. Um, there's something about it also being a Yankee doing it again. Uh, Ruth Maris judge just feels so good. I want, and it's so exciting to have that hype down the stretch. Feels like it's destined. He needs eight more. He needs eight, two a week. I think it's going to happen. You know, I think it's going to happen. Which is going to happen first judge doing that or Pujo is hitting 700. Well, I, 
I think I'm going to say judge, but I am more rooting for Pujols. <laughs> I, I mean, if I'm completely honest, having having just said like some relatively nice thing about Yankees players, though, if if Pujols doesn't make it to 700, but he just surpasses A-Rod, I'm going to consider it a success. Mm. I understand that a lot of people won't feel that way, but that's actually what I'm like really rooting for is just sure, pass yeah. A-Rod. Please. A-Rod. I get that. Please. He'll come out. Some people were saying he'll come out like Mr. 3000. Um, just to get to 700. I don't think so. I no. mean, like it's what we all crave, but I just from, <laughs> you know, what I've heard him say, I mean, not personally and in my conversations with Albert Pujols, no, about just how I hard it is for him at his age to, to do the off season uh, regimen that he has to do. I think that's sort of why he was like, yeah, I'm not doing that again. I think right. it's not so much about just like coming back and playing a few games as it is how he would have to live his entire life between now and then. I mean, I would love to be wrong. Actually, I'd sure. love to be like right about him hitting 700, which I also just there really we go. hope he's how about that? Yes. I'm with you there. Uh, what team would A-Rod play for? Like what, what team would be like, okay, we are going to be the ones that strut this man around. Right, it, it's not going to be the Yankees. It can't be like one of the the top tier. We are always competitive teams. It's not going to be one of those, right? Would the A's do it? I feel like the A's kind of would. The A's was the first. It wasn't. Team I, of. <laughs> I should have and asked I, you. It makes me so sad that that's the first yeah. thing I thought of. Is <laughs> I mean, just being like, yeah, you know what? Like, will this get some more butts in the seats? Kind of situation. Do you know what right. I mean? Like, I'm almost thinking about when when the Mets had Tim Tebow in their oh, minor Lord. leagues. Yeah. You know what I mean? As basically just like a, a freaking right. publicity stunt. Yeah. So. That's, I mean, it kind of be cool on the Rangers because he used to be there for a moment. Well, I mean, that's what I was trying to assess the teams that he was a part of. And I feel yeah. like, obviously, like the Yankees are not going to go for it and, and <laughs> no. the Mariners are not going to go for it. No. So like the Rangers is the most plausible. But yeah. yeah it's not going to happen. OK, uh, now on this judge conversation, uh, obviously the big one right now. And this is there is no wrong answer. Uh, but are you on side Otani or side judge for M- MVP? There is no wrong answer to this. No, I mean, despite what everyone on Twitter will tell you that there absolutely <laughs> is a wrong answer. Um, so I I came across this graphic from the Dan Libertard show that I wonder if you might pull up. Yes. Look at this. this look so at great. look at the fact that Shohei Otani holds every <laughs> single team record for the Angels. Yes, he's so truly- great. He's tr- it's it's baseball movie stuff. You know what I mean? Yep, like absolutely. when when a sort of a, a baseball movie philosophical question is like, how much good can one player do who can do both things? And like Otani's really showing us that thing. He's, um, this is on ESPN. Otani's leading the Angels in average home runs, RBI, OBP and hits. And he's also leading the pitching staff in wins, ERA and strikeouts. The entire ESPN team leaders is just Shohei Otani. Yes. And and I I had also recently done a little bit of a dive. You know, I feel like a lot of his season long stats are are widely circulating, but some of the stats that are kind of like underneath the hood for Shohei Otani a little bit more. Um, one of them is that he has 143 WRC plus, so mm. 43% better than league average as a uh, hitter and 155 ERA plus, so 55% better than league average as a pitcher. And he's also second in max exit velo. He is sixth in expected slugging percentage. He is seventh in expected weighted on base average. And uh, this is why I knew uh, Shane McClanahan's K minus BB <laughs> off the top of my head. Uh, as, as a pitcher, he is second uh, to Shane McClanahan's uh, 27.1% with a 27% K minus BB. And right. his 33% strikeout rate leads qualified pitchers. Also, he's fifth in CSW and ninth in hard contact, that fantastic stat uh, developed by Alexander Chase that has um, played appearances as, as the denominator instead of batted ball events. So, I mean, I think. Uh, what I'm saying here is I think I'm team Shohei Otani on this. Now, I understand the war argument, you know, that that Judge has more 
uh, both fan graphs and baseball reference war. Um, and, but it's not by a lot. Like there, the, the gap was wider right now. It's judge at 8.9 fan graphs war and, uh, baseball reference war and Otani is 8.1 at baseball reference and 7.9 at fan graphs. But if somebody wants to make that argument, I'm fine with it. The argument that I am not okay with is the, it's the most valuable player. Oh, I hate that one. Award. Don't do that. Don't and do like, that. look at his team, his team's in fourth place. Somebody like subtweeted me on this thing being like, here's a stat for you. His team is in fourth place. And it took everything that I had not to be like, here's a stat for you. It's 2022. Yeah, um, that's, because that's, I tried to no be polite to people. <laughs> yeah. MVP award is about the best, best player, not just the value of the wins and stuff. You can't do that. Uh, I, as I put it before, another really good showcase of this um, player A, player B that Passon had, essentially comparing Betts Passon. and Otani as very similar hitters. And then C and D as two pitchers, that is McClanahan and Otani is very comparable as well. So essentially you have Betts and McClanahan as Otani is what Passon's arguing, which is a very compelling argument for MVP of Otani. Um, one I thing that... Like... Oh no, yeah? go ahead. No, please. I feel like the way to put it is like, who would you choose for your team if you could only mm. choose one? And like the answer is they're both the right answer. But like I would I would choose Shohei Otani for the Phillies if I could just like pick pick one or the other of them to help my team down the stretch. Right. That's who I'd pick. Sure. So so there there is one thing to consider that might be slightly overlooked. It's not a very good argument whatsoever. I, uh, but to consider that when Otani's hitting, he's not fielding. Um, so, I mean, obviously we're saying, look, judge is the better hitter than Otani. We know this, this is not yes. up for debate. If that was up for debate, then what's the conversation? Um, and so it's not even just that he's a better hitter is that when he is hitting, he's also an above average defender as well. Um, and then of course, then how much does the pitching, Hey, I'm my impact as a pitcher is better than my defense. Been better than judges defense and the gap of, of hitting. I buy that. I think it's unbelievable. The just, just the idea of you don't have enough, you, like you save a roster spot. Exactly. I exactly. mean, that's insane to me on top of this, you know, is that is unbelievably valuable. You can have a team of like 13 Otani's, <laughs> Yeah. You know, I mean, you have nine to play the fields and then one that's rotate. I mean, you can and you can have a team of 10 Otanis and that would be it. Right. It just yeah. keeps changing them as pitchers. Uh, that's that's remarkable. You can't do that with Aaron Judge. Um, yeah, and I, I don't mean, know if that's a good Otanis argument or not. But would need we'll to see. field. You know what I mean? Like, right. how good would the Otani be at shortstop is like, maybe that's a, a good question. point. But, but, but I would say judge at short. You know, Otani could play outfield. He's just trying to stay healthy, you know? Yeah. Please stay yeah. healthy, Shohei Otani. Oh, I would please. also just like to uh, have this moment to get on a soapbox and say Shohei Otani is not a unicorn. Shohei Otani is at least two magical creatures combined. That is my <laughs> <laughs> that is my thesis. I love like, that. Yeah. like if 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 it's a unicorn. I, I had tweeted this. Like, if a unicorn could also do something else, like time travel, or like heal other unicorns with a touch of her hoof, or like shoot lightning bolts or something, all the other unicorns would be like, "Bro, you are a total Shohei Otani to that well, unicorn." Like, right. Otani is a Pegasus and a dragon combined. That's what he is. Well, well, here's the thing. <laughs> Love that um, unicorns. Let's say there are many of them. He is the unique unicorn. True, true right the one unicorn that is the unique unicorn yeah i still just feel like it's not magical no. enough for how yeah, magical yeah, he enough. is yeah, yeah. like a unicorn <laughs> is just like yeah like it's a horse with like an extra horn on its forehead mm -hmm. and like maybe it has some magical powers i don't know i'm just uh i'm done with it i'm done can with hit baseballs calling with this horn. okay yeah. uh so i think we're in agreement here it should be shohei as much as obviously judge is carrying this team that stuff's not we're going to have so many people on our mentions. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a great time. Uh, we're going to go to image of the week. Um, yes. And you've got a fun one. Uh, I, I like do. this one a lot. Uh, and it's it's very telling. It kind of goes into a question I do want to ask you um, later on in this, uh, if I can pull this up. 
what are you going to be, uh, what is your image? Would you like to describe it for everybody? Sure. Uh, so my image is a compare and contrast of the stats of Juan Soto and Joey Manessis. And I love this, not to put down Juan Soto because I absolutely love Juan Soto. I love him so much. I love it when he pimps a walk. I'm here for everything that Juan Soto does. But I just think it's a great story. It's a great, like, heartwarming story how good Joey Manessis has been. Mm -hmm. So in this graphic, we can see that uh, since uh, coming up uh, for the Nationals, of course, he had the opportunity to come up for the Nationals because Juan Soto was traded to the Padres. And, you know, obviously, as we all lost our minds when he was traded, I didn't think it was possible. But yes, it was sort of like the trade of the century. Juan Soto goes to the Padres. And this sort of relatively unheralded prospect comes up instead. And uh, in that time, uh, he has a 327 average versus uh, Juan Soto's 256. He has Obviously, uh, Juan Soto, the um, god of on-base percentage, has a better on-base percentage at 422 yes. versus Manessis's 361. But uh, Manessis is out slugging Soto 566 to 411 uh, with more home runs, 7 to 3. And this is something on a stat that is context dependent. 15 <laughs> RBI for Manessis versus 6 for yes. Soto. Now, of so, course... This was from the Nationals broadcast. They are cherry picking a little bit, but to see these are, you know, that's a, a triple slash. That's demonstrably, I'd say, better uh, for Joey, say for the OVP. I mean, that slugging percentage is way different. Yeah. Yes, it definitely is. And as a matter of fact, Joey Manessas has been outperforming not just Juan Soto, but Juan Soto and Josh Bell combined. Mm, I mean, wow. also Luke Voigt has outproduced Josh Bell. So like every part of that trade is just not looking exceptional. But the thing that I really want to focus on here is the joy that is within the name of Joey Manessis. Like he's got joy in his name. It This is a fantastic story. <laughs> so he is a 30-year-old rookie. But he was first signed uh, by Atlanta when he was 19 years old, and he spent time in the Atlanta organization. He was with the Phillies for a while. Unfortunately, they didn't give him a chance. He was with the Red Sox. He signed with the Nats um, this past offseason. He had, this is according to a wonderful article um, uh, by Ben Lindbergh on The Ring Ringer, he had 5,500 professional plate appearances before debuting with the Nats. Oh, wow. And... Now, he's been one of the top 20 players in baseball since he debuted. He has the most hits and total bases in a career through the first 25 games since Bo Bichette debuted. That's so wonderful. Yeah, it's just so great to see somebody really get their chance and run with it. So that's love why this it. is my image of the week. Great image. Yes. Absolutely. I love giving uh, praise to those that just starting off and getting their attention that they deserve after so many years of working hard. Uh, mine is completely different. I actually have two because there's a second one today that is, that is also amazing. Um, <laughs> all right. The first one, um, these are both going to be Onion headlines. And I got to say, the Onion just knocks it out of the park sometimes. So the first one is Tiger center fielder crashes into outfield wall just to feel something. Yeah, that's a... Whew. It's a tragedy. Yeah. Oh, That's, gosh. Uh, nailed it, Onion. I mean, I'm sorry. To, I remember last year, the, the Detroit Tigers really were promising a bit. You had Tarek Skubal come up. You had Casey Mize, maybe some Matt Manning sprinkled, some hints and whispers of that. You had Akil Badu. You had some some hope. Robbie Grossman. Spencer Torkelson was coming in the future, and now it's just not that. Uh, there's also one more. That I need to to bring up here. It sort of feels like the Tigers are like the yin to the Orioles' yang. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Like with every absolutely. wonderful, beautiful surprise that you must have, you must also have a surprise that makes you sad in equal measure. <laughs> yes, the other way can go. This is a great headline from the Onion. Fernando Tatis Jr. quietly asks doctor if there's anything he can take to come back quicker from PED suspension. Oh God. Oh, it's it's terrible and sad. 
It's all so terrible. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry to laugh at this, but also, Tatis, you shouldn't have done that, buddy. We and, have to laugh uh, so that we don't cry. <laughs> there's that also to make sure that no one does, you know, people learn their lesson to not do that. Uh, good job, Onion. Good job. Uh, we're going to move on because we have actually a lot to do today. Um, we have, oh, we have a weird baseball question or two from Ellen Adair. What do we have, Ellen? Yeah, so these are these are did not have to do with current baseball news, okay. but perhaps you will know why this question occurred to me while I was watching the game that I was watching today. Who okay. looks the most like an old timey baseball player to you? Just Who could in general? you? Just in general, that you could just imagine them just immediately slotting into like the you know like I know wool. the answer. There, yeah. There's only one answer to this question. I think there's actually two answers, but but. What's it's Joey Wendell? Joey Wendell is the obvious answer. <laughs> but my yes. answer for for some time has also been DJ LeMayhew. There's oh, something okay. about yeah, him yeah. that looks yeah. like like a cranky old player. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like you're just like, uh, he had a hard life, you know. I mean, and, I think uh, it's because he's six foot four and the way that he do he doesn't quite fit into the uniform, right? It's 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 not yeah, I, this I understand. Has got some tend to sort of glower. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. you, you, he he looks like like an old timey player that had some feat that is incredible. That you're like, oh my gosh, we would no longer ask baseball players to do that. But he was just like, well, yeah, right. like I uh, you know, grew up in Montana, and that's just how we do things. <laughs> um, so this is also there's an obvious answer, but I I have okay. a I have a secondary answer to this in no. case you now, take the, the before you the, say that I do yeah. want to mention. Sacris makes a great point that Spencer Strider and his mustache do hint at it. Same with Dylan C's, of course. I can definitely see them in those yes. old uniforms. Yes. Yeah, definitely, definitely like Peaky Blinders energy. Peaky um, Blinders. For sure. Yes. Yeah. So my next question is favorite current delightful baseball name. I also oh, feel wow. like there's a like the CBS guys would say like a Olive Garden breadstick here. There's like a there's low hanging fruit. I am. It's it's Lars Newt Bar. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I would also like to advocate for Tucupita Marcano. Oh well, yes. So, That's so fantastic. fun to say. Fantastic. So I mean, yeah, not yeah. like. Not, not like obvious, like, oh, that's not like just a product that I could get in or at an organic store, but like it should be a song. Tucupiti Marcano should there, be a song. There was a pitcher, um, De Spagne. And oh, I, uh, yes, exactly yes. right. Um, and I, I think in the roundups, I would always italicize it because it just it felt like it needed to be spoken like that every time. Uh, I mean, De Spagne. De Spagne. You know, like it's just he whispers as he glides like he's he's leaving the foul lines and he looks back at the team and he his eyes get low and dim. He goes to Spagna and he goes off, you know, like he, he just took you down. It's like Zorro leaving. Oh, yeah, it's perfect. You know, perfect. Um, there's also I uh, I mean, one of my favorite names that actually has a sound clip for my morning Twitch stream, by the way, everybody, 10 a.m. to 12 in the morning, every weekday morning, you should be there on twitch.tv slash pitcher list. I have a sound bite for a pitcher now because I think this name is just an 80s action star. And that's, of course, Justin Steele. And every time I have to say it, I have to say, Justin Steele. You know, I need to do that. I, if, mm -hmm. I, if I don't, I've done a disservice. Uh, I need, um, I, oh my it Lord. It wants Why? a law and order style, like sound <laughs> punctuation to it. I mean, I'm not, I, not that we want to specifically appropriate law and order, mm. but it needs a kind of like, oh, sure. type yes. of a thing after. It needs yeah. Raymond Holt to say it like Velvet Thunder yes. uh, for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <sighs> Absolutely. Uh, so, so the good stuff there, Ellen, I, I appreciate. I have one those. more question. If oh, I you may. do? Absolutely. Yes. I'm doing a play. Um, and this is just utter absurdity. So just uh, you know, if there's any sentence that I would expect Ellen to say first, I'm doing a play. Yep, that's up. That's top five. That's yeah. Top five. No, 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 no. So, so just embrace the utter absurdity of this question. I'm doing Let's a go. play on the desert island discs question. So, who are your desert island pitchers? Current, current pitchers. You can only take three current pitchers with you that's to a desert fair. island. Fair. How could you who, do that? Who to are you going to take? How could you do that to me? I, we're making news here. 
on on the <sighs> Nick and Ellen baseball show? Uh, okay, obviously you know the first one. You can just shout Sandy. it out. Thank you. <laughs> Nobody's too well. Um. Oh gosh, Shane McClanahan. Mm-hmm. I'm a McClanahan fan. Uh, now you're. Uh, this is this is too hard for the last one. This is too hard. Uh, I'm a gallon gal. But when you watch McClanahan and Sandy, you, you make different noises than you do than when it's gallon. And I'll be honest, right now, it's hard for it not to be Spencer Strider. Oh, yeah, that's fair. That's and fair. I know it's not Nola. I know. No, My no, love I, for Nola, it is deeply rooted. Uh, I'm going to take Nola is, with me to my island. That's fine. Yeah, there it is. No I can't problem. have him. He yeah. is the is the the wonderful soup you have uh, on a cold day on a, in January that in your thermos. That is that is Aaron Nola. Was just it's it's like yes, my day is good now. <laughs> I love but it's it. not it's not the ticket. It's not the concert I go and see. You know, and uh, it's uh, it, it's it's comfort food. Strider. It's must watch television. That's fair. So there you go. They're good choices. Okay, so you have Aaron Nola. Who are your two? I mean, I, I, it's just like the pitchers that I love the most. So I would also pick Zach Gallen. I'm not, I'm not like you understood. And I mean, I feel like I should just choose different ones because we're on different islands. I might honestly choose Sandy well, otherwise, but I feel like I we'll should wave choose... at each other. Yeah. 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 It's fine. Um, it's hard. I do really love Max Scherzer, but like, I'm not sure that I want to be on a desert island with him. I mean, Jacob DeGrom, I understand too, like in that same yeah. fashion, right? Yeah. I just, I ha I don't know why I can't, sometimes I can't explain why I just like develop like years ago, a very strong affection for like one extremely good pitcher over another one. And I just mm -hmm. really love Max Scherzer. Yeah. Um, Ah, whatever. I'll just, I'll just, I mean, I feel like if I were actually on a desert Island, I would probably pick like Kyle Hendricks. Cause he's so smart. He could probably figure out how to get us off the island. That, that's a good point. Yeah. Get Greg Maggs but, in there too, right? But yeah, um, I'll have, I'll have to think about it. I'll have to think about it. All I right. So sure good. I, I love this. Um, we're going to go into wild thoughts. We're running out of time and I want you to get an opportunity to have, a, oh. to have a wild thought and share it. And I know fast always lets me down. But I, I have a good feeling that you will not. So, Alan Adair, do you have a wild thought? I do. I don't know how wild it is. It might not be extremely wild by okay. Nick Pollock standards. I don't but know. my wild thought is that in extra innings, mm -hmm. rather than both teams getting a zombie runner on second, a zombie runner will be awarded to the team that got more runs not via the home run oh that's interesting so the theory yeah, here is that yeah. it is very lightly incentivizing like scoring runs by other means but it's just this this like you know should we make it to extras kind of a problem obviously right. what you're going to try to do is just win the game right now and it all also isn't just like oh well whoever D did that then just like wins the game it just means that they get an advantage in the extra innings i mean mm. i think it's a pretty pretty good advantage i mean obviously there would be problems if it's like what if it's a zero zero game then i just feel like there would be a decision tree of like oh, this well, is a who great... put the more who put more game who put more balls in play sure or this is a fantastic like zombie uh sorry fantastic wild thought i adore this yay it, it, I'm so it makes glad. me it makes me even go like okay now you now you've got me cooking here because what if in extra innings you know something that i wonder a lot about is do extra inning games go longer because teams are trying to hit home runs this is before the zombie run i uh, so what if we made it so that if you hit a home run in extra innings equate to a double <laughs> oh yeah like you can't just win it like that i mean if you have a zombie runner then you know it doesn't matter that double scores that right right the double scores one. yeah yeah, but I like instead it. of just trying to hit home runs, like it's not a major difference than just kind of hitting it down the line, you know? Yeah, I like yeah. it. I'm here so, for it. So that's probably going to be my well thought. I mean, the other one I had was a team has, <laughs> this is so stupid. No, I love it. Um, You haven't heard it yet, Alan. <laughs> no, no, I know that I love it. Like I just, <laughs> my love for your wild thoughts is unconditional. Okay, so <laughs> very kind of you um 
the team that okay you have a game series you're hosting a team right it's like a three game series the team that wins the first game decides the bat for the next game you can only use one bat what if the bat breaks the bat breaks the next team chooses their bat so okay. it goes back and forth on what bat is being used and i love this idea of of like certain players liking a certain bat, some not having some. I mean, it's a wild thought, Ellen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then maybe does the bat get worse through the game? Does it get slightly broken? Do they have to prove that it's broken? Essentially, Pete Alonso can no longer break a bat over his name. That's what yeah. we're trying to get at here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would definitely be foul play. Like the and, team would not get to choose the bat for like two or exactly. three bats. And and even more importantly, we can finally justify why Roger Clemens threw that barrel at, Roger, at at Mike Piazza because he was just frustrated that his team couldn't use that bat anymore. How dare Mike Piazza break it? You Are know? you really defending Roger Clemens right Never. now? Never. I am so sorry. I, I take it back fully. Absolutely he was a jerk. That back. Yeah, that was all intimidation pitch, and stuff. He and was a not jerk. That. Yes. Yeah. We don't. We don't like Roger Clemens. No. <laughs> all right. Okay. We've got. We got. Five minutes left. I thought we had a, a, a fun idea here. We do have to do who will win the World Series. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save that for, for Alex because it's Alex's turn. And yeah, I'm not going to let him off the hook. Oh. So so to close it out, I want to remind everybody that Ellen has a fantastic podcast with her husband, Eric. Uh, take me into the ball game. You should be listening to it. And in honor of that, I want us very quickly to say what our favorite movie, baseball movie is, and what our least favorite baseball movie is. So to end this on a high note, uh, we got to start with the worst one first. And what is that, Alan? Oh, gosh. See, yeah, I have you've seen, seen a lot, lot of yeah. terrible baseball <laughs> movies. And like sometimes I am I'm tempted to say whichever one I'm forcing myself to watch right now, which is currently mm -hmm. The Slugger's Wife. And there is a scene in it where I'm like, is this the worst single thing I have ever seen in a baseball movie? Um, our last podcast uh, was on Trouble with the Curve, which, of course, there's... Oh, you, um, yeah, right. You finally watched it. Yeah. Yeah. We finally yeah. did. And, like, it was one of the ones I was really dreading. And uh, it was terrible. But, like, The Slugger's Wife, I didn't even know was going to be terrible. It, like, mm. blindsided me with just, oh, God. Oh, God. It's really terrible. But I think my least favorite is Benchwarmers um, because, uh, first of all, I it, it, it just really, really bothers me that they posit that you can play baseball with three people on the team. What? That is the pitcher, the catcher, and a fielder. Like, you can't, you can't. What? You can't do this. It's not it's oh, not ball. possible. It's yeah, and playing a team of and here's the second problem, like uh, nine children. So it's like three adults versus nine children, but like oh god, it's 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 terrible. And it's also sort of mean-spirited. Like it's supposed to kind of be like they're bullying they were bullied. The adults were bullied. So like now they beat up on children playing baseball. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a sort of like anti-bullying thing that's like shoehorned in there that doesn't work. And I just think it's actually sort of a mean spirited, you know, early, early aughts movie. I brought it back. Oh, wow. That's what's known as a callback. Um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's my least favorite baseball movie. There's a oh, lot, man. but yeah. that's my least favorite. Wow, I've never. Ooh, okay, the so, winning team. Also, I just have to throw in there. Yeah, go like ahead. Uh, it's just so offensive to me that it is basically entirely Amy Alexander propaganda about how, like Grover Cleveland Alexander's success was just because of her. It's. Oh my God. And it like glosses over all of the things that actually made Grover Cleveland Alexander plus Ronald Reagan is in the movie. And he's just so bad as an actor, like just <laughs> as an actor that I'm like, how, how did this person become president? Um, like there's a moment where there's like a sound that happens and he covers the opposite ear. <laughs> oh no. Oh, it's that really that bad. I I kind of love that stuff though in movies. It's really bad. Um, oh my god! I am I hosting my my, my annual concerned. screening of the room this week. After all, I'm excited. Uh, but um, we might go a little see, bit long see, on this. We might, uh, or, or it might be going over the hour here slightly. I do need to say I have not seen many baseball movies, and this like you have. 
Like, I have not seen all the bad ones. I've seen the scene of the Yair Jurgens, which is the worst thing ever from Trouble with the Curve, and I'll never watch that movie proper because of it. So I'm actually going to be very controversial in mine. I'm going to say, I'm going to translate this as my most disappointed. Um, and that was Bull Durham. I think I knew that's what you were going to say. Because that is that is a movie about Susan Sarandon that has the medium, like loosely with baseball, like has these moments in these scenes, but it's just about Susan Sarandon and nothing against her, but it's not. It's, not, it's just not what I expected. It's about a relationship and like, oh, trying to get with Susan Sarandon. What? That, that's not what I expected at all. Susan Sarandon's was, was, pretty hot, but... I was very disappointed with that film. All right. Um, not at all what I was going for. Now, best movie, though. I think you know my favorite one. Uh, there's the one that's like really amazing. And I think that's the one you're going to say. My favorite baseball movie is Little Big League. Oh, And yes. that is the best baseball movie. Of any baseball film. I mean, you got Griffey there. You got Randy Johnson throwing Ched. You know, it's it's legit, that film. Everything they talk about with baseball is good. Who is safe? Who is out when there's a tag play at third where both the guys are, the two runners are there? That's a great question. And they got it right. You know, it's, mm, they they knew baseball. They did it right. They showed all this good stuff. They used the the, the Metrodome in I uh, in Minnesota because I think no, that's not the Metrodome, is it? Is it the Metrodome? That dome. That one in Minnesota not, because they, they had anymore. to they had to yeah, they had to right, it's Target Field, right? Um, but they had to film it in the winter. So but then that means he actually got legit stuff. It's so good. So that's that's my favorite one as a baseball film. What about you, Alan? It's my favorite young adult baseball film. I mean, I sure. absolutely think that it's a young adult baseball film for young adults who are always old people. And um, so that could have something Here to do go. with that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's excellent. Yeah, the baseball in it is really good. Um, I think my favorite is A League of Their Own. Um, however, I think that the most objectively good baseball movie that is still like one of my favorites is Sugar. Yes. Um, the baseball in it is uh, also yeah. exceptional. Right. Um, but yeah, I just, I think for sort of like a good time baseball movie, A League of Their Own, it just has to be. I, I, I get it. Now listen to all these episodes on uh, Take Me Into the Ball Game, Ellen Adair, Eric Lede. Uh, But that's going to do it for this episode of the Nick and Alex and Ellen <laughs> baseball show. Ellen, I cannot thank you enough for being here to remind everybody once again where they can find your stuff. Yes, I'm on Twitter at Ellen underscore Adair, and I am on Instagram at Ellen Adair G. Those are probably the best ways to find me. There you go. Uh, well, on behalf of Ellen Adair, I am Nick Pollock. I'll talk to you guys next week. Get out of here. Goodbye. Thanks for having me. <laughs>